Welcome back everyone, this is Mike from Mana Hoarders. In this video we are bringing you a commander deck tech for a brand new Simic commander from Brothers War, Tano's the Toymaker. You can cast this commander for 3, a green and a blue, you get a 3-5 legendary human artificer. His ability reads, whenever you cast a beast or bird creature spell you may copy it. Except the copy is an artifact in addition to its other types, the copy becomes a token. Before we dive into the deck, let's go over a few key points. First up, the final price for this build came in at $93.63. This does include the price of our commander and all of our lands. Now, do bear in mind, some of these prices will vary greatly depending on the quality of the cards you purchase, the vendor you use, and a variety of other factors. Our commander loves the birds and the beasts, we are running plenty of those to capitalize off of his ability. The idea is to cost reduce and ramp to cast as many creatures as early as possible to start outpacing our opponents. Then with enough card draw, we can keep refilling our hand to keep our opponents on their toes before we run over them and take the win. Now let's go ahead and dive into the deck. First up are our artifacts. Arcane Signet gives us one color of our commander's color identity. Combine Chrysalis. Creature tokens we control have flying. Crystal Shard. This is a repeatable way to get our creatures back into our hand to recast them and gain more value from our commander. Kefnet's Monument makes our blue creature spells cost one less, and whenever we cast a creature spell, we tap target creature and opponent controls and it doesn't untap during their controller's next untap step. Mindstone taps to give us one colorless. Ronus's Monument makes our green creature spells cost one less, and whenever we cast a creature spell, target creature gets plus two plus two and gains trample until end of turn. Simic Signet taps to give us a green and a blue, and Soul Ring taps to give us two colorless mana. Moving on to our creatures, we do have one legend helping out our commander, Adrix and Nev Twincasters. While not a bird or a beast, their ability is too good. If one or more tokens would be created under our control, twice that many tokens are created instead. And for our not-so-legendary creatures, Arboreal Grazer. Whenever it enters the battlefield, we're going to put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield tapped. Augury Owl. Whenever it enters the battlefield, we can scry three. Blossoming Bog Beast. Whenever it attacks, we gain 2 life. Then creatures we control gain trample and get plus x plus x until end of turn, where x is the amount of life we've gained this turn. Curiosity Crafter gives us no maximum hand size, and whenever a creature token we control deals combat damage to a player, we can draw. Echo Inspector, whenever it enters the battlefield, we can connive. Falcon Abomination enters the battlefield and creates a 2-2 black zombie creature token with Decayed. Fangren Firstborn, Whenever it attacks, we put a plus one plus one counter on each attacking creature. Foul Watcher enters the battlefield and allows us to surveil one. Garrick's Pack Leader makes it so whenever another creature with power three or greater enters the battlefield under our control, we can draw. Gilded Goose enters the battlefield and we create a food token. When we cast Hydroid Crisis, it helps us out by giving us some life gain and some card draw. Crows and Warchief makes our beasts cost one less. Manglehorn. Whenever it enters the battlefield, we can destroy a target artifact, and artifacts our opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. Mind Shrieker. We can pay two, and target player puts the top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard, and then Mind Shrieker gets plus X plus X, where X is that card's converted mana cost. Murder of Crows. Whenever another creature dies, we can draw a card and discard a card. Nessian Game Warden allows us to look at the top X cards of our library, where X is the number of force we control. We can reveal a creature card from among them and put it into our hand. Owl Familiar, whenever it enters the battlefield, we can draw one and discard one. Protean Hulk, whenever it dies, we can search our library for any number of creature cards with total CMC 6 or less, put them onto the battlefield, and then shuffle. Ridge Scale Tusker, whenever it enters the battlefield, we get a 1-1 counter on each other creature we control. Roaring Primadox, at the beginning of our upkeep, we can bounce a creature to our hand. Siege Behemoth has Hexproof, and as long as it's attacking for each creature we control, they can assign their combat damage as though they weren't blocked. Silver Raven enters and we can scry one. Species Gorger, at the beginning of our upkeep, will bounce a creature as well. Sprout Back Trudge has cost reduction equal to the amount of life we've gained this turn, and at the beginning of our end step, if we gain life, we can cast it from our graveyard. Thrag Tusk, whenever it enters the battlefield, we can gain five life, and whenever it leaves, we get a 3-3 beast. Thunderfoot Baylaw has Trample, and as long as we control our commander, it gets plus two plus two, and other creatures we control get plus two plus two and have Trample. Trigon Predator has Flying, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we can destroy a target artifact or enchantment they control. Wolvenwald Oddity has Trample and Haste, and transforms into a rather nice surprise for our opponents. 
Warden of Evo's Isle, creature spells with flying we cast cost one less. And Woodland Bellower. Whenever it enters the battlefield, we can search our library for a non-legendary green creature card with a converted mana cost three or less, put it onto the battlefield, and shuffle. Next up are our enchantments. Alpha Status. The enchanted creature gets plus two plus two for each other creature on the battlefield that shares a creature type with it. Colossal Majesty. At the beginning of our upkeep, if we control a creature with power four or greater, we can draw. Elemental Bond. Whenever a creature with power three or greater enters under our control, we can draw. Fertile Ground. We can enchant a land. Whenever that enchanted land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional one mana of any color. Levitation gives all of our creatures flying. And Reflections of Lajara. Whenever it enters the battlefield, we choose a creature type. Whenever we cast a spell of the chosen type, we copy that spell. Moving on to our instance, Blink of an Eye, we can bounce a non-land permanent, and if we kick the spell, we can draw a card. Druid's Deliverance, we can prevent all combat damage will be dealt to us this turn and populate. Growth Spiral lets us draw a card and put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield. Harrow, we can sacrifice a land to search our library from two basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield, and shuffle. Into the Royal lets us balance a non-land permanent and draw a card, potentially. Mana Leak will counter target spell unless its controller pays three. Negate counters target non-creature spell. Perplexing Test, we can choose one, bounce all creature tokens to their owner's hands, or return all non-creature tokens to their owner's hands. Roiling Regrowth, we can sacrifice a land, search our library for up to two basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped, and shuffle. And Winged Portent, we can draw a card for each creature with flying we control, but if we pay the cleave cost, we remove the words that are in the brackets. For our sorceries, Cultivate, we can search our library for up to two basic land cards, reveal them, put one onto the battlefield tapped, and one into our hand. Explore, we can play an additional land this turn, and we can draw. Open into Wonder, X target creatures can't be blocked this turn, and whenever they deal combat damage to a player, we can draw a card. Overwhelming Stampede, until end of turn, creatures we control get Trample and plus X plus X, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control. Preordain allows us to scry two and then draw a card. Rampant Growth, we can search our library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and shuffle. Shamanic Revelation helps us out with some card draw and potentially some life gain. Summer Bloom, we can play up to three additional land cards this turn. And Wash Out returns all permanents of the color of our choice to their owner's hands. And last but not least is our mana base. We are keeping things very basic with 19 basic forests and 16 basic islands. And just like that, we've reached the end of this Commander Deck Tech for Tano's the Toymaker. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, tell your friends about us, and leave a comment down below. Let us know what commanders you would like to see us build around in the future. I really appreciate all of your support.